Hello, everyone. This is Lady Iron from the Iron Underneath and my great friend and partner, Lady Mythos of Ice Hi and guys. Fire. Hi, guys. <laughs> so we wanted to bring you uh, part three on the Crypts of Winterfell today. Uh, we had a little glitchy video last time. We want to apologize for the sound on that and the glitchiness. Hopefully we fixed it. That so so just to give you, uh, yeah, really. So just to give you a little update on what we did discuss, in case you couldn't hear it, uh, was what we think is in the Crypts of Winterfell. Mm -hmm. And what we had said was that we believe that it may be the Great Other. And that that is why a Stark always has to be at Winterfell. We've come to a little bit more that we think fits in there too. So uh, we'll do a little bit more on what we think is in the crypts. Uh, so basically to, to in, our, in our thinking, winter is the great other. And it's, it's what we think the Starks have to be there to guard or bind. It's also, we talk about Ragnarok in A Song of Ice and Fire, and the Ragnarok is, counterpart is the war in heaven. So we also think that Winterfell is where winter fell, but we also think it's where angels fell. So when the angels were asked to take sides between God and the devil, the angels that hadn't committed terrible sin were cast down to the earth. The angels who had committed a little worse sins were cast into the ocean. The ones who had committed bad sins were cast down to hell. So we believe that, that therein lies the importance of uh, Winterfell and of the Starks because they're the ones who have made a pact with the children of the forest as the first men to, to watch over this entity and keep it under control. Yeah, and then this, is, this has been really interesting for us now. Um, what we really are, our job is and our niche is is picking apart certain things and re and relaying them to you and these theories that we come up with are basically stuff that we discovered that could be true doesn't necessarily have to be true but it is very interesting my our point is we want to help you enjoy this literature and and delve into the world a little bit more and if you look at it through the eyes of folklore or mythology or any sort of theology, it brings new life to it. And, you know, we know that history does repeat itself. And that's a big thing with George is that he doesn't want this to happen. And even in A Song of Ice and Fire now, we can gain a lot of information from just realizing that the history is being repeated. Um, we talked about um George creating these characters old old creators and giving or old old characters and giving them their own long backstories and there is a reason for this it's not just put in there for for immersion it's put in there to teach a lesson and i think that you know that's important and one thing that we have learned is that blood magic is something that's very important and not only in fire but in ice as well we can take from Danny and see what happened with her um, even Relore um, and we can also look on the ice side of it and see what's going on with Bran and the weirwood trees being fed by blood that's the ice side of it and so we're going to just talk about um, what we think is in um, the Crypts of Winterfell, another theory we think about the Crypts of Winterfell, and um, talk about 
what we've seen in past history and try to pull apart a little bit more guys, and help you guys kind of enjoy it a little bit more. Yes, definitely. And this, a lot of this, most of this comes from, well, a lot of research and the world of ice and fire, which is such a great resource to have. I love that book so much. Uh, it's not only beautiful, it's it's just like the other books. You read and you read and you get more and more and more every time. It's mm -hmm. just mind blowing. So what we were what we wanted to talk about is how the Starks and the Kings in the North are basically last time we spoke about how the kings of winter or the kings in the north that are in the crypt. The kings of winter sit with iron apps, how they are, uh, we think, fallen angels, like I said, fey, and that uh, they need to be, they need to be guarded. And that uh, comes from what we think ties into Roos Bolton, Dustin, and the Barrowlands. And when we talk about the Barrow Kings, it goes back into history all the way to during the long night. And the thing about that, that is that that's when the pact was made between the uh, first men and the Kings of Winter, or I mean, I'm sorry, the Children of the Forest and the first men. And then from there is what we think the kings of winter are actually could could have significance for in these crypts because of something else being in there. Yeah. Yeah, so, and that's sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> um, go ahead. no, which is which is really, really interesting when you think about it you know but we got to thinking about it and one thing I did want to point out as well before we get started guys um, I can't say this enough the books are not the show they are two separate entities and as far as what we research we can get a, a piece here and there from the show um, because it ties in pretty closely with the book but otherwise no we can't really take anything from the show that is of great significance and for example you know um, we're going to talk about Roose Bolton and he's not dead and um, we're going to talk about the children of the forest and the others and we are of a mind that the others are not made out of human stock but they're made out of children of the forest stock because we can in a world of ice and fire it talks about them having an inhuman um, beauty about them and of course that could be caused I we do understand that that could be caused by the children making humans into the others but they're more described as looking almost exactly like the children of the forest with you know they're bigger they're they're they look different but they have those very elfish features mm -hmm. about them and that's that's different and that's significant as we're going to talk about um with this pact we think that these others are being attached to the children of the forest we're going to talk about these others being like the ones who they are the ones who fell like the angels who fell <laughs> yeah yeah so basically uh the kings in the north or the kings of winter are in the crypts with swords across their laps like i said when bran talks about the kings he says that they're kings of winter because they were defeated at winter fell Mm -hmm. that's be another tie-in that's because kings of winter fell at winterfell mm -hmm. so or yeah kings of winter fell at winterfell mm -hmm. so they were they were they fell there but they're also 
bound there. Mm. And the interesting part of that is that the pact was made during the long night, which this pact was made as the Andals were still crossing the narrow sea. They hadn't have even gotten to Westeros yet. So they're, they are the, are the ones who brought iron. Mm -hmm. Yet the swords that sit across the laps of the kings are iron swords. Right. So it's a little interesting how they got to be iron. Yeah, and and we went and we want to clarify too. Um, we think that, and we're going to talk about the Barrow Kings and kind of go into that a little bit more here in a second. But we think that the Kings of Winter, okay, and the Kings of the North are two separate. Things. We think that as we research this, and we'll, we'll go through it, as we researched it, it's pointing more and more to the kings of winter being of other blood. And maybe that's not of, you know, they're not complete others, but we believe that they are of other blood and that the Starks were the ones, of course, we can think through the Night's nice King, we can, we can go into these, these ideas and these examples, but we think that they're separate, and when the, the Starks defeated them, that is when they started calling themselves the, king, the kings of the North, the kings in the North. And so that's very significant if you think about it, because if they are winter, if, if the others are winter and the embodiment of winter um, and that's where they fell, it just seems to kind of click a little bit more. And why wouldn't they keep calling themselves the kings of winter? It's winter has a very negative vibe about it. Even in winter is coming. It's a threat. Yes, it is. So that's, Probably, well, the kings in the north, yeah, they have, we believe they have other blood. And mm -hmm. this, this is what leads us to Ruse Bolton. Mm -hmm. And the world of ice and fire, as I said, tells us that the wars between the Boltons and Starks were legion. They had they had tons and tons and tons of battles to fight with uh, basically the Bolton's ancestors. And who Roos Bolton is an ancestor, uh, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Where, what I wanna say actually is that these wars they've been fighting between themselves go back to the long night itself. Mm -hmm. So this is thousands of years of the Starks and Boltons warring. Yeah. So, how Stark won most of these wars, but they didn't win all of the wars. There's a king named Royce Bolton, who is second of his name. He's said to have burned and taken Winterfell itself. So even back then, he burned and took Winterfell. Right. Which is really interesting. And his namesake and descendant, who's Royce the Fourth, is remembered in history by the name Royce Redarm because he would plunge his hand into the prisoners or the people that they that they killed, maybe even still alive, reach in and pull out their entrails and hang them from the walls of Winterfell. Yeah. Which has and to be an affront to Winterfell yeah, itself. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's just I mean, that's an affront because that's where people went for safety, you know. And we know how how that is, but and we know the Boltons too, but um there is in a world of ice and fire, they talk about some runic re records that are at the Citadel. And yeah. they talk about all of these wars that were fought before, um, and during the you know, during the long night all the way through and um, the Barrow Kings were fighting um, with the other people in the north and they um, ended up you know later on we can we can see that they had joined you know eventually 
and they were eradicated at one point. And with the Barrow Kings, they had styled themselves like the big guns there. And go ahead, Ashley. Sorry, you know more about these Barrow Kings than I do. <laughs> Great. Uh, oh, what I have to say, well, the rest of the rest of this Royce Red Arm and King Royce Bolton is that uh, there were other Red Kings that were said to, when they would win one of these wars against the Starks, they would take the skins of Stark princes and make cloaks out of them. And that's important because that's king's blood and that's skin and well and this ties into roost later and it's nuts guys yeah it <laughs> it, it, it this is in roost's blood from yeah. way way back yeah so uh when they captured and flayed these stark princes you know this is a huge affront to the old gods it's mm -hmm an affront to the kings of winter it's an affront to the north itself mm -hmm. and so this this sickness this kind of molten sickness it, it it's been going on since since the long night mm -hmm. and it's not the first time also as as i said earlier that winterfell's been burned and taken by the boltons mm -hmm. so the boltons have been in the crypts before and they've also been in winterfell before mm -hmm. which is seems to be Roos's ultimate goal is to yeah. get winterfell get into the crypts and basically style himself another red king and or, or even even a uh well let me say this first um now i think we need to tell you that the boltons and the Dustins, the two we're going to be talking about tonight, are descendants of the Barrow Kings. And that is very, very significant because the Barrow Kings were, like I said, with all of the infighting and all of the greed going on in between these families that, in, that are styled as the Barrow Kings, um, there was the old king, and he was the first Barrow King. And, um, you know, he was, he was the big nasty. But the people mm -hmm. around him were starting to bicker and to fight. And there was a lot of infighting and there was a lot of fighting going on, I guess you would call them, with other tribes in the north, with other families in the north. And um, a curse befell them because of that. Now, this curse was put on them and, it said, and the curse said that you will not ever be as good as the first Barrow King. You will never succeed as, you know, as the Barrow, as good as the first Barrow King. And this curse also stole their life away from them. And in the world of Ice and Fire, it talks about how they were corpse-like, that they were very, they aged very quickly and that they were you know these just shells of people and um and that's sounds an awful lot like Bruce Bolton he he seems to be this disgusting kind of you know corpse like man white you know very and that's why he leeches himself is because his goal in our opinion is to achieve immortality and um, you look at Lady Dustin as well. She's described as a handsome woman, but, you know, very hard, very, you know, and Lady Dustin, of course, is um, a Dustin through marriage and tied by the Barrow Kings and so or tied to the Barrow Kings through that. Now, the bad blood will out. And I think that that's what Roos is trying to do is like, you know, he's been his life is being sucked away and he's doing these leeches for God knows how long and God knows whatever kind of blood magic it's disgusting and I was always under the impression that we really didn't know a whole lot about the Boltons but right. this 
you know, like, is Roos like this really, really old guy? Well, maybe. I mean, I'm not throwing anything out, but like the bolt-on theory. I mean, I think it's somewhat like that, but I'll get in, we'll get into that later. But he has had ancestors, and we found a missing link as to why Roos is behaving like this and why Lady Dustin is behaving like this. And you guys, she is not on the north side, the, the Northman side. She's not. She is 100% about Roos. Oh, yeah. Yes, she definitely is. <laughs> the thing is, after this, see, when the, when the Boltons and Starks were, were fighting all those years ago, they basically went and they took Winterfell back that first time. Yeah. Then after that, the rest of the the noble houses in the north that were royal, that were ancient royal houses, were uh, basically taken down to vassals by the Starks. They were all defeated and all bent the knee to the mm. Starks. So when now the after that after the, after they basically got the North all together under them, the threat to them started to come by sea from the Andals. Okay. The sea is where the reeds come in to yeah. the stars. And just for a minute, we'll talk about that just because it, it's Just because really it's cool. so cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. So when, when Jojen and Mira come to Bran, to take him to the Three-Eyed Crow, it's, they've already, the Cranagmen have already been protecting the Starks by sea for thousands of years. And so they have been their number one vassal yeah. house. So, and basically they are protected by the Starks, and they're also, of course, protected by where they are. And the marshes in Mount Kalen is not easy to find. And well, they're and they they fought the Starks' enemies. Don't forget that they or they fought their enemies, or they. I'm sorry, they didn't fight their enemies. That's what I was trying to say. They fought with the Starks because they were allied with even their enemies. They allied with their enemies for the Starks. The Reeds yes. are loyal. Yes, they're awesome. They did. Mm -hmm. They allied with the Red King, the Barrel King, and uh, the Kings of Winter, which is so cool because it, this is such a, a Reed thing to do, to even mm -hmm. ally with your enemies to protect right. Winterfell and the Starks. That's how far they'll go. Right. So that's when when Mira and jo when Mira and Jojen come to Bran and swear by the old gods and the new, they also swear by bronze and iron. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting. They're the Andals. They protected the Starks from the Andals by mm -hmm. sea, and now they're still protecting them. Yeah. Which is cool because also swearing by bronze and swearing by iron, that is like, we think that the reeds are descendants or mixed with the children of the forest, so there's your bronze. And swearing by the iron, um, swearing by the iron is about the andals mm -hmm. and about you know, okay, we're swearing by this and this. This is ironclad. We are with you. And and I don't think we have really thought about the depth of what's really, what is really going on. I mean, because swearing by bronze, that's their descendants. Uh, and iron, that's basically what the Starks, you know, they, they took that. And the iron is... The Andals, the first men, I swear by the Andals and the first men. I swear by the old gods and the new. So that's ironclad. It sure is. So, um, sorry, this is a huge topic, so I've, I've got a, <laughs> a few notes here. <laughs> um, basically, 
also when they were protecting the Starks before, they were protecting them not only by sea, but by by joining with these three different kings, the Barrow Kings, the Red King, and the Kings of Winter. The Starks are now protected from the north by the wall. Winterfell is protected by the Starks themselves. Mm -hmm. And now the Cranig men are protecting them from the sea. But now they're also with their allies, they're protecting them from the south as well. So that's that's a huge, huge, uh, it's a huge ally for the, for the Starks to have. But no wonder Howland Reed came out of nowhere and showed up at the tourney of Harrenhal. Now that right. makes a lot of sense because right. they've and, been sworn right. to them for so long. Yeah, and Howland being a descendant of of the Children of the Forest you know, you kind of wonder, well, how did he know? I mean, how did he know to send Jojen and Mira? And why would he send his children? Well, Jojen knew he was going to die. I mean, why would he do that? I, you know, they've got magical blood as well. And I, and I fully believe that. And I think that even Howl's Moving Castle has something to do with his abilities as a Kranigman and, and his bloodlines. I think that that has a lot to do with it. But... Yeah, I mean, go ahead, sorry. So basically, yeah, they, uh, no, <laughs> no one was able to get to them. Mm. So basically, after, after the Starks had their, their uh, protection ironclad, mm -hmm. no pun intended, <laughs> the <laughs> Rickard, King Rickard Stark, added the neck to the domain of of the Starks yeah. and of the North. So now in present time, history is, of course, as it does, repeating itself. Yeah. Is basically still carrying, well, not basically, but still carrying this age-old desire for, for Winterfell. Yeah. It's it's yeah. in his DNA. Right. It, he was He's a descendant of people who have just been trained forever. Right. So the the Barrowton and the Barrowlands helps him try to accomplish what he's what he's trying to accomplish to get yeah. Winterfell back through his relationship with Barbary Dustin because right. she is the wardeness of the Barrowlands. Yeah. And this I think that um, you know what we what the point that we're wanting to make here is the protection areas okay we've got the wall and, and, and as far as the others go we've got the wall we've got winterfell who is now taken over by Roose bolton and now the neck as well but the thing about winterfell is what turned it on its head is that there is no Stark in Winterfell, so the protection there is gone. And what does that mean? That means that the Starks themselves are there to guard those corpses. And I don't, you know, we don't know how far back that goes, but if it goes back... You know, we know that the Kings of Winter are buried there. I mean, we, we do know that. But the Starks were there because of, a, because of an agreement made. Okay, look, this is where Winter fell. So, you guys, there must be one of your bloodline in here. Because you guys are protected. You, this is where they fell? You are responsible for this. You are the ones that must be here to keep this at bay. And so now that Roos has got it, the protection of Winterfell is gone. And we know that the protection of the wall will be gone very, very soon. So what is in those crypts that Roos wants? What does he want? I mean, we still, do we know? Well, yeah, we do now. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yes, what well, we we really it all kind of clicked when we started looking at the past history of the Boltons and the Starks. Yeah. 
and it's, it's, it's really interesting because the barrows, the barrow lands, if you recall in a game of Thrones, when Ned and Robert, when Robert comes to Winterfell to ask Ned to be his hand, they go riding one morning and they end up in the barrow lands and Rob, King Robert says something like, seven hells, Ned, have you taken me to a graveyard? And he says, yes, I have. Exactly. These are the barrel kings that are buried in these in these in these barrel mounds, mm -hmm. and the barrel mounds are, at, like we just said, watched over by none other than Lady Barbary Dustin, yep. who yep. also lost her husband to the Tower of Joy, and mm -hmm. she's angry that she didn't get his bones back. Yeah. So she's yeah. watching for Ned's bones now right. to come right. back to Winterfell and intercept them is what she wants right. to do. Right. And yeah. that might be part of the reason for Roos wanting in these scripts so badly. Yeah. yeah. And and the uh, and Roos also went to great great lengths to get himself in position in Winterfell. He I think we think I keep saying I think like it was no <laughs> we think and it was actually Ashley that told me she's like Roos killed Domeric and here's why and so. I was like whoa but he went through all these steps to get in to Winterfell okay first off he he fooled Tywin Lannister okay he got he fooled Tywin Lannister and Walder Frey to kill Rob Stark. That eliminates one of them. He put his bastard in Winterfell to get rid of Bran and Rickon, and for all intents and purposes, I think he thought they did. They yeah. went to, he had him legitimized. So he had an heir to Winterfell so that he could go and be the Lord the warden of the north all of this stuff and and he knew that ramsey wouldn't be trusted so if anything bad happened Roos could just blame it on him he also right. he could blame rob stark's death on the lannisters in the frays and boy he gets off scot-free there but Always. Always, yeah, and he's a clever, clever man. And what is down in those crypts, I think, is his, like we said, is a secret to his mortal immortality. Mm -hmm. I think that we think that he will, in some way, shape, or form, take on either Ned or Rob in some sort of you know like the faceless man you know become something else like become the stark um just to just to gain a foothold to, and we think that down there in those crypts is you know another sword or a a way for him to let them out and it's more like uh, it's along the lines of he. Well, it isn't along the lines. He's the new. He wants to be the new Knights King, is what we're saying. And yeah. we think the Knights King was a Stark. Okay, he is obsessed with that. Yeah. And you know, we see him acting very, very strangely, like we said with the leeches. And he's got. I think he. We think he skinned Rob. And. Remember what Melisandre said about glamoring. Remember, and even blood magic for that matter. We've seen weirder things happen by blood magic. People have been resurrected and weird stuff like that. Yeah. So if he becomes the Stark and if he gets the other sword and he lets them out, he will become, it's, it's indicative of the new Night's King because look what happened with the Night's King and all of his all of the people he enthralled at the wall, his men. So that is a scary, scary prospect. And I think that um, Barbary Dustin is there because she has a hatred for the Starks. She, 
I think she's infatuated with Bruce, and I think she's been approached with immortality to some to some degree. And corpse oh. queen. Yeah, she's the corpse queen. I mean, mm -hmm. there it's there's a there's even Irish myth about how at certain times of well at certain times of the year in certain rituals these barrow graves will be activated and that's where the fae are that's mm -hmm. where they're buried or mm -hmm. actually that's where they live because the same sort of pact was made with the malaysians and the the Tawatha Didanan, who are the people of the mounds and yes. there there is there well there's someone who has to watch over them so yeah. that would be Lady Barbary Dustin, and mm -hmm. she would be that would therefore make her the corpse queen. Yes, and we have to remember that Roos did stab Rob, mm -hmm. and he might have kept that blood, and he does a lot with leeches, and he has a way, or he's trying to find a way to get to the crypts. Yeah. What he could do with that blood is, is like Casey just said, activate, activate the, what he wants that's down there. Right. He might actually be, we think, a relative of the beings who are down there. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think so. I mean, and I think that goes with his agelessness. I think that, you know, well, not agelessness, he does look very sickly and old and and you know but he's he's described as a hard man too which i thought was interesting when we went back and looked at it with barbary dustin it was just like that's kind of similar but can you imagine can you imagine him getting getting control over the crypts and can you imagine her getting control over the barrows it's insane now the crypts are covered with a sword and that the king we know yeah. yeah yeah and the iron is what in folklore the iron is what keeps the 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 fey at bay sorry for the rhyme but it's <laughs> they it keeps them at bay and um these things are starting to disintegrate not only that the uh, the sword on the lap is also uh, guest right not being provided. Yeah, they're saying you are not welcome here. You have no, no protection down here. No. And it's interesting, like I said before, that these swords are iron. And it makes us wonder a little bit if one of the Boltons did get down there somehow or if the Starks switched the swords to iron because it it binds in a different way, it. then I, yeah, you know, I do. It's, it's something about protection from Andals and yeah. First Man. Yeah, and it's um it's very very old, and I and I you know I I lean more towards iron, don't you? I mean because yeah. or not iron, uh, the Starks, don't you? Because they are the guardians. Yeah. And, you know, and like we said, how long is that tunnel? I mean, it goes, uh, Egrit, and that's another thing we talked about. Egrit is not one to tell lies. So why would she lie about something like the tunnels going all the way under the wall? That's yeah. a long, long ways. And that's a big, big army for Roos. And then add the barrows to that. You know, and it's almost like in Anglo-Saxon, before they, in the Anglo-Saxon history, before they um, adopted Christianity, uh, while they were still pagan, those places um, were never, never desecrated, never touched, because it was seen as, you know, a very, very bad thing. You just did not do that, because you didn't know what spirits you were messing with. And exactly. so I think that that ties into it, too, because... These guys, okay, they are there, and they lost all these men in this war against the, you know, against these Starks and the kings of the north. I just can't imagine. And then just Roos. I mean, it's almost like, 
if Roos takes this on, he could control it, being that he has taken on some sort of blood magic, and now he's got control over all of these undead. It just reminds me of Lord of the Rings, when Aragorn is got all those dead guys, and he walks in there, and he's like, oh, you're any on, he's like, honor your oath, and I'll set you free. It just reminds me that of that without the setting them free and without the oath. It's like, uh, I own you, you know? Yeah. yeah. Strangely enough, right before we started this video, uh, a picture popped up on Tumblr or on Imgur that was from the Lord of the Rings. And it was a creature coming out of a barrow grave. Mm -hmm. And it's actually called a barrel white, W I G C. Amazing. And it, Amazing. it's black with yeah. crazy white eyes, and it's coming for for someone. Yeah. So it's this same thing could happen, and I think this is a little bit of a nod to the to Tolkien and mm -hmm. or a reply, as George would say. Yeah. A reply, yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, because yeah, he likes to. Uh, I think he likes to take on the ideas of Tolkien, uh, but uh, he likes to go flunk and dump them on their head. You know, I mean, right. we know, you know, we know George, and and here's my deal. Occam's razor isn't George, okay? I mean, uh, it's just not even. And I said this before, the details of the details of the details have details. He, every word, every single word is written there for a reason. And I keep bringing up the whole Red Wedding thing. If you read the books and read them as they came out, oh, bless your heart, too, because, my God, waiting that long, I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> I know that when I read it, I really, I was like, hmm, Danny's, Danny's, or a visions in the house of the undying. I was like, that's weird. But I didn't make the connection. I, I mean, maybe I'm just dumb, but I didn't make that connection. Tiny little details in words said is, yeah. you know, and the, the Reaver chapter, it's unfolding from tiny little words said. It's like, that you first take right oh i'm sorry yeah not the reaver i apologize i keep saying that yes thank you for correcting me i apologize but yes yes the forsaken yes, sorry <laughs> i'm yeah okay. yeah <laughs> oh, yeah yeah yes thank god because but yeah even like these little things like these little hints we got about euron um yeah. oh it could be this or it could be that tiny little things in the details and then boom right in your face so <laughs> you yep. know yeah well, yep so but, basically the uh just to go over the the very last part of oh, this yeah. history with the with the barrel lands is that uh this is what the when the when the barrel when the barrel lands were were uh, ruled over by the first king who just declared himself king of all first men, mm -hmm. uh, he ruled supreme, and we know that his descendants were cursed by placing a curse on the great barrel. Mm -hmm. So when the when that curse was placed it allows no man to rival the first king. And if they tried, the curse makes them corpse-like in appearance, as Lady Mythos was talking about with Roos. So this is where that comes from. And right. it's also, like you said, sucks the vitality and life out of the person. So obviously Roos has been cursed because he's, he's messed with Winterfell and he's messed probably with the graves. Right. I think he'll do anything he can yeah. to try and fulfill what he wants to. It's in his blood and history repeats itself. It is, it's exactly what happened back then. It's like right before the long, you know, for the long night, during the long night, 
all of this was happening and then in succession here we go again right exactly so you know this is like like we said the red wedding allying with the Lannisters the phrase putting everything on them and not really taking any any responsibility upon himself he keeps himself out of it you know the it's just really amazing how smart Roost is you he's know he's not a, he's a stupid guy yeah. and he knows what he wants so if this curse on him really explains a lot of the blood magic that surrounds him and right his friendship with Lady Dustin, his relationship with Lady Dustin, whatever that might be, it's basically just having an ally who also wants Winterfell. Yeah. And it shows well, she shares the same the same blood. exact want and blood. Yeah, she it's shares that blood, blood hatred. She shares the blood hatred for the Starks. Yes and a want for for winterfell or yeah. to be to be a stark more like mm -hmm. for her yeah and, that's you know she's down there with theon looking at looking at the the kings and getting a chill not noticing maybe noticing but more more feeling that guest right is not offered here no this is not where you belong this is not your place yeah yeah and you know on that too is like uh is like when um we can go back to john's uh dreams here about the crypts as well yeah and um you know there's a lot to talk about as far as or there's a lot of different theories about john's feelings in the crypts and we're not going to talk about john's lineage his parentage <laughs> or anything because Honestly, guys, this season has pretty much worn the both of us out on John. Um, it's not that we don't like him, and we aren't we aren't going well, to. We love him. About it. <laughs> right, we don't want to argue about it because you know we all have different thoughts, and you know what, guys, no matter what your opinion is, if you want to say that John is a time traveler that is the son of a hot pie and Arya from, I mean, that's up to you. I mean, seriously, but. I like that. John, <laughs> <laughs> but, but thanks. But yeah, with, you know, with John being down there, it's like, I think it's because the Starks that are buried down there, are still feeling very protective of this place. John right. has died. John has died. Right. And at the and wall. So, yeah, at the end. So when he comes back, do you think the Stark's gonna be like, hey, just come on down here? I think right. it was like a premonition. Like he was like, okay, you know, and I talked about it the last or we talked about it last time is like that it wasn't his time down there. And that could be it. And it could be a, a majority of things, but I think it's more you are what we're protecting from. Get right. the fuck out. That's what I think it is. And you yeah. have a good thought too. Well, my thought was that, you know, we know John has stark blood through Liana. Mm -hmm. And Ned also tells him you're not my son but you share my my blood mm -hmm. so we know he's part stark but we also know no matter who the father is that he is most likely targaryen. Almost, yeah yes almost positively a targaryen mm -hmm. so he is ice and fire mm -hmm. and i think that the, tar the targaryen blood the targaryen fire is not that's why that the crypts are not his place that's why he hears that's why he keeps saying i'm not a stark i'm not a stark i don't belong here mm -hmm. and he feels unwelcome there and he feels he feels really scared 
And I think that might be because of it's not pure stark blood. Yeah. And and I think that that's I think that that's probably the case too, you know. I mean, granted I don't know what maybe some of y'all can can straighten me out here, but you know, we know that there were women buried in the crypts that were the wives of Starks. And so technically they were Starks, but John is different. Okay. John is, yeah, he's got Stark blood and he's got Targaryen blood, but what is it about him and why isn't he seen as an actual Stark? Why would he, my question is, why would he be seen more of a Targaryen than a Stark? And is it, is it because his the father means more? I don't think so. I really, really don't. Mm -hmm. I think he's like you were talking about. I think he's a double threat. I think that John will be on both sides. I think that he is. It's ice and fire. It's not ice against fire. I think mm -hmm. that he will be on both sides of this because he's got Melisandre. Okay. And we know, we know we can connect Blood Raven directly to R'hllor through Melisandre. Mm -hmm. And he's also got the cold. He's got the ice because he is a Stark on that side. But more than that, he's dead. He was, he's dead yeah. and he's resurrected. But, right. We're going to get into that, and it's going to be so great, you guys, <laughs> later, yeah. our next series. So, interesting. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. have to do a whole other video on that, because that, mm -hmm. that is, it's really, really mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, having an, an undead person come into the crypts, it, it can't be a good thing. Mm -mm. These guys are bound by iron and they're also not offering guest right this is very mm. important guest right it's so important oh, yes it's one of the most important things in westeros rat cook right <laughs> exactly <laughs> you don't want to have your sons baked into pies do you <laughs> well, <So. laughs> yes and yeah, so. and wasn't that Titus Androgynous too from Shakespeare? That his wasn't. Then that isn't yeah. that where that came from? Titus I Androgynous. So. I, mm -hmm. I think so. Anyway, sorry, I just rained up thought. No, yeah, you're right. It's interesting because you know Rat Cook. That's all about guest right as well, and it it really. You know, is that why John belongs there or doesn't belong there? Is, you know, I mean, Bran had a huge reaction when he ended up in the Night Fort. And, you know, the stories of Old Nan are hardly ever wrong. Mm -hmm. Old Nan hasn't let us down yet. Mm -hmm. And not only have the Night's Watch forgotten their vows, there hasn't been a Stark at Winterfell for a little bit of time now. Yeah. Finally, well, see, this is why we, we just can't even get into the show at all because yeah. it, it just, you can't. So for the purposes of this discussion, we just won't even talk about that. No. We'll just talk about how it ties into Guest Right and the Rat Cook. Right. And, but they see, that's just, it is just like, we, we can't, we can't until it is down in black and white. I mean, and we're not trying to be offensive to anybody. Like we said, we just want to, you know, make you think, you know, and that's what this is about. And that's what George wants. He wants yeah. to, he wants us to reread. Yeah. He does. And he said, he straight up said, I would rather not have people read my books that aren't willing to open their mind. And that 
says a lot. So, and I took that word, I took his words to heart. Ashley and I took his words to heart. It was, <laughs> look at it from a million different ways. You are most likely wrong, but you could be right. But what did you learn? And That's how did you feel? Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Life is about the journey. Learning is about what happened along the way. Exactly. It's not about the end point. Mm -mm. Yeah. So I think that I think that we've uh, I think we've addressed everything we wanted to. Yeah. Oh, all oh. except for the fact that Liana's statue is in the yeah. is in the crypt with the yeah. with the king. Right, and she's the only female statue that was built in the crypts. Now there's females down there, but not female statues. And yeah. Yeah, so maybe Liana's spirit or her uh just her it, her tomb being down there might be the binding factor down there. She and might be the guardian of mm -hmm. the crypts. Yeah. Yeah, That's think Cerberus. Yeah. Or Anubis even. Think, you know, weighing the souls on a scale, a heart against a feather. She's, I mean, she seems very um, protector, guardian. That's the feather. That's why mm -hmm. Ned put the feather in her hand. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wonderful. So, yes. really, I think that you know we're gonna probably we'll, we want to get into the bloodstone emperor mm -hmm. and i think we'll do that next video mm -hmm. so we would really love to hear your thoughts and and yes. hear what you have to say about what we've just presented and mm -hmm. if you have anything to add or if, if there's anything you'd like us to talk about before we get to the bloodstone emperor please let us know and leave yeah. a comment and yeah. we're totally would love to talk yes. and we're just not into anybody being mean no that's what i was getting ready to say guys we're not here to attack each other and this may not be your thing i mean and if it's not your thing that's fine i mean we are here for the community for you guys we work hard because we love you guys. We want to have a conversation with you guys. Now, some people don't want to listen to two people talk for, you know, an hour. Some people want the, the want the quick and pictures and tell me and it's over. And that's that's fantastic. You know, that's great. But to don't each their own. Yeah, to each their own. And and we're not gonna hold that against you, but you know, if you, if you want to leave a thumbs down, tell us why. Tell us how you think we can improve. Tell us what it is. It would be so great. That is welcome here. Just, you know, have open up a conversation. Don't be nasty or dirty. It seems like um, this community uh, has really showed its ass in the past few weeks. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I'm not talking about you guys. I'm not talking about the viewers. Um, no. But it's turning into a soap opera and we're staying out of it. Um, Lady Iron and I are, we're doing our own thing. And um, if you enjoy us, then welcome. If this isn't your thing, then, you know, thanks for giving it a shot. But uh, really? um, yeah, exactly. I mean, and, uh, and next time, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say that, you know, if, if it isn't your thing, that's that's great. It's mm -hmm. just that there's no need for a rude comment, mm -hmm. you know, just like I do. If I don't like a video, I just move on. Right. No, right. no harm, no foul. Right. And it is a conversation, and I mm -hmm. have to give a little not. I have to give a little credit to Mister Payne there for. Yes. yes. We are having a conversation. Yes. That's what yes. this is all about. It's been said right. many times. Yes, and that's you know, and that's how that's how we we like it. And um, you know, we're not trying to isolate ourselves here, but um, Ashley and I are um, are two 
halves of a, of a whole soul. And we found this out over the past few months and we fight like sisters, but, <laughs> we, but we love each other like sisters. And, um, we've just, you know, we've made the decision together that this is, um, this is going to be what we do. And, um, you know, I hope you guys stick around with it and I, and I hope you stay. I, I really do. And any suggestions that you guys have, great. It's wonderful. But next time we're going to be doing a quick short video on Ned Stark. Um, that's going to be very, very interesting. We're not going to tell you what it's about because unfortunately, um, we tell you what it's about usually within a week after we do it, it's on some, you know, somebody <laughs> else's channel. So, um, so we're not going to tell you what it's about, but it's very cool. And then after that, we're starting a huge, huge, huge series. And, um, this has been investigated by us and will continue to be investigated by us. But this is an essay that was written. Um, you know, Ashley and I don't read Reddit unless it's um, given to us by the author. And yes, so we won't ever, ever, ever give a theory or mm -hmm. give any information without giving credit. No, no, without getting credit and and without having strict consent or, um, right. you know, permission. Because, permission to do so. And uh, Nick, I do have to say this to Nick. Nick, you want us to talk about the new chapter, and I think we're going to just let's do that, Ashley. Let's let's you know, guys, leave some questions down there. We'll we'll talk about the Ned theory oh, that yeah. we're going to talk about, and let's Nick. Yes, the new the new chapter. We will uh, do a couple of things on that, and uh, anything you guys have questions that we can you know talk about. That's great. Um, I also wanted to show you guys my sweet girl Danielle Doherty. She uh, paints these. She sent this to me. Uh, it's beautiful. Now this is this is silver paint, and she does this all by hand she does the details all without anything she's amazing and you guys she has an Etsy if you'd like to go check her out and it's it's amazing and she's good and it doesn't cost a hundred and something dollars so <laughs> we'll leave a in the description yes yes absolutely guys Thank you guys so much for come for being here and for sticking with us and we love you so much. Love and you guys. Back very soon. Is. Yeah. Lots of love. Mm -hmm.